Hello Factoria people. Welcome back to the broadcast from Crasturia. Last time we got yellow tech cards, utility tech cards set up. And we were going to try and uh, launch some rockets. Things don't quite go as planned in this one. Things don't quite go as planned. As always, if you're enjoying, please let me know. With likes and comments and all that stuff. Uh, what's this, episode 6? Episode 6. We're doing alright. I'm having fun. I'm having fun playing. And I'm having fun recording. Still got a long way to go yet. Alright. Without further ado, let's get straight into it, shall we? So here's where we were. We were having some problems. Copper is drying up quite badly. Iron is uh, definitely not going to last much longer in this current state. And this causes a knock on effects down the bus, as you can see. But, you know, the yellow cards are in. We need to work our way through the tech tree, really. The goal is, is the long term plan is to work our way through the tech tree, try and get at least, try and get red, green, military, and blue cards to their planned obsolescence so that we can turn this into the big old base for Mega Base expansion. Just turn this into a massive glorified mall. But we're not there yet. We're not there yet. So if we need more iron and copper, thankfully, we've got this monstrosity of a copper patch here. We've got this iron ore patch here, which is also very handily quite close. They're close enough to rig up with belts. Even if belts would feel quite expensive at this point still, red belts are still 20-odd. Uh, Oh no, that's not true at all. Five. Five iron plates. Five iron plates each. And thankfully we got 2,000 in the storage. So I guess we could get the iron and the copper hooked in at great expense. But it will pay for itself quite quickly. There's 53 million. There's also 35 million there. And 18 million copper there. So let's not be too worried about it, shall we? Let's just hook that up and be done with it. Alright, I did the copper first. Just because uh, we need the four lanes of copper, really. We need all four lanes, because this was drying up pretty severely. This was only... Oh, whoops. Uh, this was... Well, this was still a red belt of copper, but still. We do have... Um, Mining Drill Mark II's unlocked. We can craft those for not too much expense. Four rare metals and five steel gear wheels. And they have a slightly faster mining speed. They mine over a larger area as well. And they don't take that much extra power, only 25 kilowatts. Uh, but I decide that, given that we've got this big patch here, I don't think upgrading these to Mark II mining drills will solve too many problems. But the copper is in. The extra two bouts of copper is in. Propagate that down the bus. Solves a lot of problems, thankfully. Thankfully that solves a lot of problems. And then research-wise we just queued up everything to get us straight to optimization tech cards. Uh, this is Ultimate Research Queue mod, just a reminder. So that means we can do things like I want optimization tech cards, and you just double click it to queue it, and it queues it all up. I've spoken about that before, but I'll speak about it again. So this was, if anyone wants to know, fact fans, about 1500 belts to get all that in. So, not too bad. Not too bad. And let's do the iron as well. There we go. 
starting to run out of uh, efficiency modules. I made a whole heap of efficiency modules and then discontinued production thinking that that would probably that would be enough, right? 1200 efficiency modules. I'll have enough by now for the whole rest of the game by now. Not true. Ended up not being true. I guess each one of these 315 miners needs two. So I kind of dropped the ball a bit on that one. Uh, so I, I added another um, just at the bottom of red circuits here. Another couple of machines just to get me some more modules. But you'll notice that electronic components have now dried up. We fixed the iron. And we fixed the uh, copper. But electronic components are now not keeping up. Because the electronic components need to go into red circuits, because the red circuits need to go into blue circuits. Because the blue circuits need to go into yellow tech cards. Oh, and so do low density structures. Oh my god. It's all getting away from us a little bit. I had my uh, factorio lab get her by a plan, and everything seemed to be correct. This obviously could do with expanding, and that's a simple enough job. We'll just move these out of the way. Um, I'll just show you where I've hooked these up. So, I just bring the four belts in, and uh, just use simple priority splitters to make sure that this patch is prioritised first. So these full belts here only then take up these gaps on this. So this means that this patch, this ore here, will be um, prioritised. Same with the copper. Oh, except for the fact that this copper, two lanes of the copper go into the new one. But anyway. So this still says, uh, mining patch plumber still says this is going to take 8 hours and 48 minutes to run dry. But I'm sure we can hit that target. I'm sure we can hit that target. So there's a lot going on. We need to do a big housekeeping phase. Uh, power is also not brilliant. Uh, we need more electronic components. Green circuits. I think I've already expanded green circuits in this so far. I can't remember. Uh, so let's just do this big housekeeping phase. Because as I change one thing, the next thing has problems. You'll notice that... Uh, no, I haven't expanded green circuits yet. I will expand green circuits. Let's jump forward in time and I can explain the uh, knock-on effect that all of these changes have. Here we go. Things are starting to look a bit better now. Yes, by expanding uh, electronic components, that created a knock-on effect for plastic, especially. Plastic needed duplicating. This was always the plan to have this many plastic, uh, plastic chemical plants running. I just didn't build it like that to start with. And I probably should have done, but I didn't. Expanding the green cards caused a problem with the wood. So greenhouses needed doubling up. That was a simple enough job. But uh, yeah, wood was definitely not keeping up as soon as we noticed that. As soon as uh, as soon as red circuits had enough electronic components to craft all the time, it stopped having enough green circuits to craft all the time and not having enough green circuits. Green circuit production going constantly was also having a knock-on effect on the wood supply. So we're mostly there now. We're mostly there. Uh, yeah, solar did take a bit of an expansion. As I mentioned before, this is not the best way to do the solar power expansion. Like, uh, but this is temporary. This is a temporary idea. I will just put more solar power down as and when I need it, and then once I don't need it anymore, and I finally get nuclear power sorted, finally, um, I can repurpose the solar panels and the accumulators into satellite production. So, 
we're okay. We're mostly going okay. Obviously, we're not consuming fully anymore. Uh, we're plowing our way through the tech tree, which means that we're not actually consuming the yellow and the purple cards very much at the moment while we get through these early blue and military des uh, researches. But the hand-fed military science thing is, is still working, much to a lot of people's chagrin, I'm sure. Okay, the last ingredient we need for uh, on the bus is rocket control units. Rocket control units are exactly the same as they are in vanilla. Speed modules plus purple circuits, processing units. It should be a simple case of just designing a nice two-to-one thing here and throwing that in. So let's do that. Here we go, a bit over-engineered, I guess. I guess I didn't really need to spend all of these undergrounds when I could have just had a red inserter outputting them onto a belt that went this way and have purple circuits come down this way. I keep saying purple circuits. The, the sprite used to be more purple than this, and people were arguing over whether they were purple or blue, and then they changed them to be more blue, but because I'm a boomer, I keep saying purple circuits. That's just how old I am. Uh, you'll notice down here in the bottom left, I'm handcrafting productivity modules because uh, I'm getting the rocket silo down soon, and I didn't want to automate any module production just yet. So I'm handcrafting four Productivity Module 3s, which is a lot easier to do in Craft Story, I have to say. Just so that as soon as the rocket silo is built, we can we can plug those in. So I mentioned at the start that things uh, things don't go quite go to plan here. Power is power is still mostly okay. The problem occurs when I actually bother to open the tech tree and look and see what I want to research as soon as I start getting optimization tech going. Optimization tech is space science, basically. And it occurs to me that really the game probably wants you to get matter tech cards set up before that. If we actually open the tech tree for real to see what is a precursor to what, uh, we find Oh god, how are we going to do this? We find optimization tech cards in the tree. Somewhere down here. Optimization tech cards unlocks a lot of things. But it doesn't unlock many interesting things on its own. It unlocks some extra researches on this side. Worker robot speeds, mining productivity. Both of these are good, don't get me wrong. Yeah, unlock some extra things here that need other tech cards that we don't have access to yet. So that's a bit of a bust. That's unfortunate. Now unlock singularity tech cards, which, you know, again. And then, with yellow and optimization, we can do artillery shell range, whoop de doo Personal laser defenses, energy weapons damage, projector hot damage, you know, follow a robot count, I guess, hooray. So just rushing space science after all this time turns out it may have been a mistake. It doesn't get us a huge amount on its own. We can launch one rocket, I suppose. One on Productivity 4 actually needs 3,200 cards. I believe the early stages of mining productivity in Vanilla just start off at 1,000 tech. But those covered by mining productivity 3 here. So, anyway, let's roll back ever so slightly. When you research the Singularity Labs, you also then can research uh, Matter Tech cards, but if we look at what Matter Tech cards unlock on, on their own... Energy Control Units, Immersion Processing, which is good, don't get me wrong, and Improved Pollution Filters. Um, and also eventually, slightly further down the line, gives you access to turning raw resources into matter, and then you can turn that matter into other raw resources. But that is very much a late game thing, as you need 
That's not that much of a late game thing, I suppose. Immersion processing is the big one, really. The last resource that we have yet to mine. Well, I suppose we've not done any um, mineral water either, but we'd need mineral water to get the matter tech cards anyway. Um... So after all of that, space science isn't going to get us that much on its own. But also in retrospect, matter tech cards won't get you that much on their own either. You kind of really need to do both. You kind of just need to do both before you can do anything else. So let's carry on with the plan and get space science done. But space science isn't going to be such a huge sea change as much as I thought it would be. As much as I remember it being. Uh, just for the record, matter tech cards, first you need to do matter research data, which is rare metals plastic, which we both, we have both of those on the bus already. Lithium and imosite crystals. Imosite crystals aren't too taxing. Lithium is the big one. Lithium is a right royal pain. Anyway. So that was that. That was uh, my thinking. And I decide, of course, to just carry on. Do the rocket silo anyway. Do it anyway. Worked this far. Worked so far. Why not just keep going? I did also want to talk a bit in this episode about uh, pollution filters. I changed my setup slightly. Oh, 10,000 production deck cards at almost 17 hours. Thanks, game. I've changed my pollution thing slightly. You may remember before that I was putting one in each corner of a chunk like this. And I realised that maybe that's not quite exactly the best way to go. I did some experiments. I put a substation down. I surrounded the whole thing, the whole substation, in air purifiers, which is why I have 80 plus in my inventory. And. My initial um, my initial analysis was correct. I turned the debug on and turned the pollution and stuff. It does work roughly how I explained before, like a straw. But you also have to factor in that pollution always spreads from more polluted chunks to less polluted chunks. And so I thought, well, if you're just sucking it up like a straw, surely it makes more sense to put the straw, if you will, into the section with the most pollution, rather than putting them down here and stuff like that. So that's why I've moved this to this. Um, but there is like a critical mass of how much pollution will move between chunk to chunk, and each one of these does 75 pollu minus 75 pollution a minute, and pollution doesn't spread that quickly. Um, so it's not necessarily more advantageous for you to take a substation, put as many of these around it as can possibly go, and then f fill those with uh, air pu uh, uh, pollution filters. What happens if you do this is that the chunk that you're in very quickly goes down to no pollution at all. But you'll see that these numbers are changing on a consistent basis, once a second. So this chunk goes to no pollution very quickly, but you're still then beholden to the game's update of the pollution flowing into this chunk. So there's not strictly any better for you to do it like this. You can see here there's the, the, the chunk spends some time at zero pollution, which is inefficient. That means that these are working, but they're not doing anything for a long time. The whole time that this is at zero just means it's not doing anything, and then this pollution is not flowing. Obviously, in reality, it wouldn't work like this, right? Like, the pollution would flow into this chunk at the same speed as that you were removing it from, you know, but because the game doesn't work like that, it's still only leaving this chunk 
in very tiny increments at a time. So while it is still better to do this than what I was doing, more filters in, in one chunk is better than several than, than fewer filters in neighbouring chunks. This is therefore is this is better than this, just because of the mechanics of the game. And I uh, shouldn't have done that, because robots are going to come in from elsewhere and uh, take these away. Don't... No, I need those. Guys, I need those. I need those. Anyway. Um, so I ran some tests in, in editor mode and sped up the game tick speed, which you can do in editor mode, by the way. If you didn't know that, just do forward slash editor. Press time. And then there's play, speed up, slow down. And I did various tests with... Um, various combinations of, of pollution filter setups and I came to the conclusion my findings anyway came to the conclusion that it's best to sort of spread this out over a couple of different chunks and just leave it running and over the course of maybe an hour this pollution will basically dissipate and you will have solved your pollution problems anyway that was a small little aside because I had I rather than doing anything productive to the base. Like, pollution isn't even a problem. You can see that I've cleared the bias out. It's not even really an issue. But I, I was curious. I wanted to do some... I wanted to go into the lab. I wanted to find out for sure what was going on. So I did that. And now I'm telling you that. So hopefully you find that useful. <laughs> hopefully. Oh my goodness, there's a rocket. So we do have everything. I built the silo by hand, just because, you know, I had concrete in a in a box somewhere, and uh, why can I never find it when I need it? Where is it? Why is it in combat? Anyway, steel, processing units, electric engine units, pipes, concrete, I have all of those in buffers somewhere. Well, I'm a smart lad. And then with the four productivity modules, giving 40% uh, productivity, you only need, what, 760, is it, of each one of these? Now obviously we've got the problem where we need to launch satellites. And I thought, I can't be bothered to build satellites. Plus I'd have to, like, bring the accumulators and the solar panels over. And I thought, actually, what would make more sense is if I just bring a satellite over where they were, they're there with a requester chest. I put the requester chest somewhere where it's actually going to get power. And then I can start stockpiling uh, optimization tech cards here, or space research data, I should say, which turns into optimization tech cards. Um, which was always the plan. And just launch some rockets. And then I thought, well, if I'm going to go to the effort of doing logistics requests and stuff, I may as well put my logistics mall down. Right? I may as well just do that. This is going to be the end of the bus. If I stick with the original plan of researching everything, getting rid of everything that needs red, green, military, blue cards, turning this space into the Fancy Pants mall, that allows us to do the um, mega base plan. Then there's no reason why I can't just have this be the end of the bus. So I went into sandbox mode. I installed a few extra mods, uh, smarter pasting, and uh, copy recipe to chest. Because as I've spoken about before, when you want to do a logistics mall. Like this, probably should build a chest or two, shouldn't I? Just, just give me this for now, just so I can demonstrate what's happening. And you say I want to make belts. You can shift right click, paste, and shift left click, uh, copy rather, and shift left click paste onto a requester chest, and that works. But what that doesn't work is with is this one and this one. But with these two mods, OSHA Smarter Pasting and Copy Recipe to Chest, you can do that. You can paste the recipe onto the inserter, 
and it tells the inserter providing the inserter is connected to the logistics network or you or pasting it might do that to stop inserting at X amount which you can set in the mod settings single item a stack half a stack etc uh, and then the inserter that that the chest that that inserter is next to also gets that logistics filter as well this is a pure quality of life thing of course you can do all of this by hand but it's quite annoying to do this and then to do this and then to go how much is a stack I don't actually know I have to install another mod or turn on debug mode to find out how much a stack of this is maybe it's a hundred I don't know is a hundred too much whatever I mean I guess that's not a huge problem and then go into here and then go like this for every single every single thing good god so I, I uh, did that and that looks like this this isn't everything in the game, of course. This is everything we need for now. So this doesn't include... This is everything, basically, that we can and want to make with the items we have on the bus. So this doesn't include late-game inserters. This doesn't include late-game buildings. But this will at least get us a mall. Blue belts are on here. Uh, a mall, trains, nuclear power is in here, so that we can start expanding a bit more properly. And then all we need to do is we just need to make one assembly machine extra in here that can make satellites for us, and we can launch the rocket. So let's plop that down and let the robot start working on it. So I plopped it down. I built some of it by hand. In theory enough of it by hand that the robot should be able to do the rest. So the substations are going to work. Uh, I wanted to just show off this bit really. So I'm going to put 17 fast loaders here into these red chests. And then the logistics bots are going to start pulling from the red chests and putting them into this. And I, and, I, and I did this and I thought wow that was really satisfying. People might want to see that. Yeah, there it goes. This causes quite a big problem down the mall, obviously, down the line, because suddenly uh, you're consuming 17 red belts of, of stuff. But the logistics bots uh, start plowing their way through this, putting the assemblers down. There's one or two things that we can't make because we don't have the item on the bus, and that Mostly, that is the nuclear stuff. Like we can't make reactors because we don't have concrete on the bus. We can't make heat exchangers because we don't have quartz on the bus. And then there's a little area down here that makes the intermediates, the beams, the gears, the uh, automation cores, the inserter parts. But this should get us going. This should... <laughs> should get us going. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to tidy up the bus a lot as well. Because you probably re you probably recall, there's a lot of junk on the bus. You know? There's this bit here which makes power poles. There's this bit here which makes inserts and pipes and god knows what else. You know? Uh, I didn't put any military stuff on here yet. I will do. I'll expand. I might use this section down here for some military things. But for now I thought I would, I would just leave it. Because military is not huge issue especially you know there's so much you can do in Crustoria the pollution cloud you can manage that quite easily uh, combat is, is quite easy in Crustoria I feel actually feel quite bad about lowering the biter density and uh, base size because it's really not a problem God, the logistics bots are slow, aren't they? Okay. So, with this up and running, essentially up and running, we could do another big housekeeping phase. 
get rid of a lot of uh, junk. Oh, the belt mall as well. I forgot about the belt mall. Good God. Right, let's go. Yes, be gone. Not hugely smart of me to ask construction bots to remove chests with literal thousands of items in, but uh, what can I say? I'm not a smart man. Energy weapons damage 5 has just finished. Let's queue up a whole bunch more stuff, shall we? And let me just let me get rid of these by hand. That would be the smarter option. Oh no. So this bit can go. Military tech is uh running dry, as we all knew it would eventually. The belt bit can go. The power pole bit can go. Oh, this is a funny story. I disconnected the... Um, where was it? I disconnected this bit here that was making the power poles. And that classic Factorio thing happened where it turns out a lot of the base was connected to the power supply from one individual wooden power pole. But the issue I had is that this half of the base, everything north of the bus up to here, was connected to the solar power and was therefore okay. And everything this side of the bus was connected to this. And I couldn't work out for the life of me why it said I had low power. And I kept adding more and more and more solar panels before I realised that this accumulator bar was never ever charging. And so then I was getting brownouts because I had low power, the coal power was, um, the coal miners were not working as hard, which meant coal was not making its way to the boilers, which meant power was going down, which meant coal was not being mined. And I was convinced that it was just not enough solar power to get me through the night, accumulators to get me through the night. So I was like, okay, well, I'll just bolster coal supply then, because I thought coal was running out. No, it was just merely one, I think like this wooden power pole here was connecting this half of the base to this half of the base. Uh, so I bolstered that here with this, just so that hopefully that mistake doesn't happen again. But of course it will, it's Factorio, it's Factorio Mistake 101. Wow, Red Circuits are struggling, aren't they, in this setup? Red circuits are struggling. And steel, of course. The big issue with steel is that I, in my infinite wisdom, I decided that I didn't need to put steel in its own smelting column. I thought, oh, I just... The Factorio planner says you only need two belts of iron, so I'll just take it off the bus. Yikes. Steel and red circuits go into quite a lot of things in the mall, basically, is what's happening here. Red circuits go into substations, they go into roboports, they go into uh, nuclear plants, which, you know, 400 advanced circuits just in there, another 100 in the chest. This will, have, this will put a large drain on the bus, of course it will. Will it ever stabilise? I'm not sure. It, quite, it really depends on quite how much I've asked this to make. And for most cases, I've asked it to just make me one stack of everything. Uh, you know, unless that is ridiculous, like nuclear pa nuclear things. I've said, just make me four. Don't make me a whole stack. But then other things, ten turbines, that's not going to be enough. One stack of heat exchanger is probably not enough. So we're going to have to tweak these numbers, but as a starter for ten, as we like to say in, in this country, it's fine. Now, I've gone through all of that, and we never even launched the bloody rocket, did we? So let's get that done. Let's just add the thing that we said we were going to add. The whole reason we got bloody caught up in this rigmarole anyway. And launch the bloody rocket, shall we? Uh, satellite. 
Oh my god, do not bring me that much. Five times ingredients. No, bring me half of the ingredients for a satellite. That's much more reasonable. That's much more reasonable. Alright, I'll let this uh, do its thing. And I'll come back in a minute. Half the ingredients? Why do I pick half the ingredients? Am I dense or something? Let me just pick one X of the ingredients. But let me not output it. Because I don't want satellites being made constantly because... The default speed of the rocket silo is more than 60 sites per minute, and the base is balanced around 60 sites per minute. So really, I need to work out some way of doing that. Anyway, listen, let's get on with it, shall we? Come on, it's been a long episode. Let's put the, so the satellite in the rocket. Launch the bloody thing. Away it goes. Hooray. We bloody did it. And for now, I'll just put the space research data in a chest. Because that's a whole nother kettle of fish. And I'll leave these rockets uh, to just be built. I won't automate them for now. Okay. Bit of a weird episode, I realise. A lot happened, and also not a lot happened. But we really, nearly need to get steel sorted. This is a big concern for me. I think what I'm probably going to do is... I, the, the issue with steel is that it's not a simple case of just making more smelting stacks. You need to make the coke somewhere with wood and coal. And I do have this coal thing here and this iron ore here. There's a coal thing here as well. So I might just make a dedicated steel smelting area here and bring the steel in. Which means I can get rid of this as well. And we can start tidying the base up, as I say, to be more... Uh, or just a glorified mall, and then we can think about expansion. We think about hitting that mega base territory, and how we want to facilitate that. Whether we want to make like a 500 science per minute base, which we then expand, or whether we would just want to set ourselves up. I don't think we can set ourselves up for going straight into 5,000 science per minute. That is the target, by the way, 5,000 science per minute. I don't think we can do that in one big go. Mostly because we're going to need all of the end game stuff, the advanced assembly machines, the advanced labs and stuff. So we're going to need something to do all of that research first. So we're going to need an interim base in between this one and the mega base. But let's not get too bogged down in that. Let's get steel sorted first, because obviously steel is the big bottleneck right now. That's stopping us from basically doing anything. And we'll take it from there. Alright, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please let me know with a like. And a comment. And if you want to see more Crust broadcasts from Crustoria, be sure to subscribe. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Take care. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.